Thank you. Is this thing on? Good? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks to Cascadia JS. This is really an awesome event. I'm honored to be here and super excited to uh, be sharing the stage with so many awesome speakers, great content. Um, and being a musician, I have to thank the sound guy, too. He's doing an awesome job. So, uh, so rather than talking about me for this slide, I'll tell you a quick little story. I was at Mood Fabrics in New York City the other day, uh, popularized by Project Runway. And I saw a guy I recognized from an old show called, well, I thought he was from Soap, which is an awesome show. Turns out he's, he's from Benson, uh, kind of an offshoot. But uh, I walked up to him and I said, are you who I think you are? And his pitch perfect response was, I am who I think I am. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's who he was. So um, this, this topic, front end dependency management, and particularly modules, can be something of a hotly debated topic um, throughout the few years, um, but also especially recently. Maybe like two weeks ago, there was a gist that J.R. Burke started, and then there's a whole list of uh, comments that are that are you know they're they're largely um, collegial, but you know people get excited about this stuff. So let's let's start with the premise that we're all in this together, and we're all buddies. Maybe we get drinks together, coffee. You watch my cats while I'm away. Uh, maybe you help me build a cat tracker, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I don't want to get all kumbaya on you, but let's, let's, let's do that first. And, and also, feel free to tweet at me or come talk to me afterwards if you uh, have any questions or think I missed something or whatever. So I don't want to spend too much time on history because that could be a whole topic in and of itself, but I encourage you to uh, look it up. You know, Dojo uh, started some of the stuff, and, um, you know, there are some terms to, to kind of work from. Uh, it's a pretty pretty interesting uh, tale, and depending on who you, you hear it from, it, it may vary a little bit. So what are the problems we are trying to solve here? Um, in the old days, probably you know, not really that long ago, and maybe some of you guys are, uh, some of you people are, are, are doing it still, um, if you want to build an application and uh, you want jQuery, you'll go out and grab it, put a script tag in the head, uh, jQuery UI perhaps, maybe some plugins. Um, you know, we haven't even started talking about your application code. So maybe you have some common stuff, some specific application stuff. Um, maybe you've got a top-level site-wide object that you're attaching everything to. And you've got all sorts of script tags in the head. You've got, um, uh, which, which of course gives you many HTTP requests. and. You're having to manage the order that things are loaded, all, all this stuff, right? So that's kind of a pain. And uh, uh, that, that site-wide object reminds me of YUI, which nothing against them. But um, you, guys, you guys remember Mojito and Cocktails and get excited in the early days of Node? And then they released the code, and it was YUI dot whatever. That was, that was sad. Um, so anyway. Um, so those are the problems we're trying to solve, but, uh, and, and solving problems are great in and of themselves, uh, but what are the benefits that we're going to gain from solving these problems? So first of all, we'll get performance if we uh, bring down those HTTP requests, um, which, is at, uh, which is awesome, right? That's one of the first things you should probably be doing. Uh, some of the examples that I'll show you will be uh, asynchronous, so we're not really taking advantage of that. but. When you're going to prod, you should always be doing a build. So uh, maybe we'll touch on that later. But also, uh, because our dependencies are more easily managed for us, we get these other three uh, as well. Stability, sanity, reuse, all that good stuff. So um, is that right? I think so. so. So how do we get there? Essentially, what, what are the pieces that we're looking for in implementing this? So we want modules. We want a module pattern for small decoupled components that can be easily loaded and they can easily depend on one another and easily export uh, you know, their, their functionality. We also want tooling 
to manage these uh, dependencies, um, the whole dependency tree. And as a bonus, we'd like a repo to pull from, perhaps to publish to, um, whether it's public or private. Um, you know, uh, in, in our case, we have a mix. We're getting our third-party stuff from, from public repos, and we have uh, private components that we have a private repo for, so uh, repo is a nice kind of bonus. So although there are many ways to uh, achieve this, and some of these ways can be mixed and matched, uh, today we're going to talk about AMD, Required JS, and Bower, and uh, CommonJS, Browserify, and MPM. So originally I had verses up there, but I'm, I'm trying to, to play down this kind of uh, antagonistic thing. So, um, and, and let me just say too, for those of you who don't know, but AMD stands for Asynchronous Module Definition, and of course NPM is uh, uh, Node Package Manager. So again, when the, when the rubber hits the road, how, how do we see these things working out? So we'd like one entry point for our JavaScript. We would like interdependent modules and we want tooling that gathers these dependencies and helps us manage them. So we're going to look at some code here. I'm not going to be a daredevil and start actually coding. I'm gonna, I have it in slides. But, uh, so let's, let's start. Let's start here. And I want to focus first on uh, Beep.js because it um, uses, uh, requires uh, uh, AMD pattern. So you'll see you have a, a defined call. Your uh, first argument there is a dependency array. And then you have your callback function, which you pass your dependencies to. And if we had uh, multiple ones, like you'll see in the one above, they're just, uh, you know, it's an array that you just have to map the arguments to in your callback function. So, um, and then once we get into the meet there, you'll see some functionality, and then you return, excuse me, your, uh, your, your, um, your functionality. So now if we start from the top, we've got our uh, script tag, which references required JS. And when that loads, it looks at the data main and uh, um, goes into the JS directory and gets to main JS. And you'll notice a lot of these, they, they omit the, the JS part. That's, that's assumed. So require will go into main JS, which is your one entry point. And the first thing it'll see is your dependency array. And it'll walk through. Uh, all of the nested dependencies, gather them all up for you, and uh, you know, get you ready to roll, and then, and then you can uh, pass them to your callback function and call them. Right? So this, is, this isn't uh, too complicated. Um, and, and again, so well, first of all, if you run this code and you look in your network tab, you'll see a download for each one of these dependencies. So uh, that's, the, uh, that's the way require will pull it all together. And again, it's worth noting that when you go to production, uh, Require has a tool called RJS that will uh, package that all up for you. So, um, so here's, here's a similar code in Browserify. So the first thing you'll notice is that Browserify, you need to bundle. So the first thing you'll do is jump into the terminal. And you know, assuming you've already got Browserify installed, you'll run Browserify main.js to your bundle.js file and whatever the names of those are. Um, so the other thing you'll notice, too, is that uh, you don't need any of this asynchronous module definition wrapping. So uh, there, there's some wrapping under the hood that happens, but uh, in general, uh, you can just start writing code in your modules. Um, so, and, and it's also important to note that these require calls are synchronous. Uh, but it's bundled, so it's all kind of right there for you. There's not, there's not too much cost. Um, and then you'll see, uh, you know, these are the common JS format. So you export your functionality with module.exports. And um, if you guys aren't familiar, that's, that, that can be a little confusing at first, I think. Um, but basically, you use exports. Every, every component uh, uses exports to export its functionality. Module is just, um, uh, you know, links to exports. And um, you can only use module.exports once, but if you want to export out something like an API, you can either map it to an object, or um, uh, you can do multiple exports by saying exports.speak equals uh, 
function, you know, uh, some sort of function or something. I think I have some examples for that. So, yeah, that's what we're getting into here. So, for this example, I'm kind of mashing up beep and robot just because I wanted to just uh, throw something together. Um, but if you had a speak function and a dance function, you could just uh, map it to an object like this in uh, the common JS format. And uh, you could do it similarly in require. You just return the object with your, your API mapping like that, um, which we'll see in a moment. But as I was saying, you can also just do exports dot whatever, and uh, you can do it directly if you want in that way. That's your uh, style. So, um, and then this is the require example, right? Um, but this is what we call the hybrid pattern. So, and, and this will, the benefit of this will be obvious in a minute, but you can basically omit the dependency array and then you set up your uh, callback function with these three uh, arguments. And the order of, of those arguments are very important. At first I was like, okay, require module exports because module.exports just was in my head. And the error that you'll get when you do that is not clear and you may spend hours trying to debug a simple example that you're getting ready for a presentation. So uh, yeah, be careful of that. Um, and then this way you can uh, do your requires, your, your, essentially your dependencies. You can just require them directly and assign them to a variable. And then you can also use module.exports or exports.whatever and uh, you know, uh, use that pattern as well, which, which can be nice, as you'll see, uh, when we get into something a little bit more complex. So this is a super, super simple backbone view, but you can already start to see that your dependency array is getting a little out of hand. And if you were adding in you know, a model or a collection, some utils, some um, mixins, whatever, whatever you've got, this dependency array is gonna get really, really nasty. Um, in the words of a good friend, it will be Barfzilla. <laughs> and I, I tried to find an image for Barfzilla and that, that didn't work out. But um, if you had a ton of dependencies, you could see how this sort of hybrid approach is much nicer, right? Um, and I didn't update that return app view, which would still work like that, but you could also do uh, module.exports uh, equals app view. So, um, so what we've seen so far, these, these two approaches are fairly similar, um, but here are some ways in which they're different. So requires big win is async module load, which means that we can dive in quickly we can get up and running by dropping in require that script tag and point to our data main and start using modules and dependencies and we're off to the races. It's uh, pretty easy to just get that rolling. Also with require, if you're debugging in the browser, you can, um, you can reference any module, any dependency that you've already pulled in, you can just reference it directly in the debugging console. So for example, you could say var robot equals require robot and uh, you'd have access to it right away. And while not an often requirement, you could also load in code uh, dynamically. Um, a good example that I saw in that gist that I mentioned previously is somebody uh, works for this company that does, I think it's reviews or something for big um, e-commerce sites and they load up the bare minimum code to get the button and stuff kind of loaded but when your cursor gets within 200 pixels of it, then it will asynchronously download the view and uh, anything it needs for, for that particular uh, page. And yeah, that's that bullet point. So Browserify's big wins uh, are npm install module name dash dash save. So that's like super awesome. You're working on a project and you're like, I need this other thing. You jump into the console, you do npm install other thing, dash dash save, and what happens is npm goes out and gets it. It'll install it in your node modules uh, directory, and it'll add it to your package JSON file, so anytime somebody else uses, you know, pulls down your, uh, your repo or, or what have you, uh, all the dependencies are tracked in your package JSON, which is awesome. You can just get off to the races again there. Uh, there's, of course, the potential to share code between the server and the browser. And through bundling and transforms, it seems like you can do almost anything, which is pretty cool. So 
Now, I, I, I'm purposely avoiding getting into the weeds of this debate because the weeds are pretty thick. Uh, but whether you choose one option or the other, you're, you're probably going to run into um, limitations or problems no matter what. Uh, requires config, which we haven't really talked about at all yet because you don't really need it to just kind of get up and running. But once you start to get a slightly more complex app and perhaps you need some shims or um, you don't want to have these long paths for every time you reference jQuery or Backbone, you can do some path mapping. Uh, but, but once you kind of get into a more complex application, the requires config uh, can definitely get a little painful, especially if you're getting into testing or uh, perhaps code coverage, uh, as a, a gentleman and I were discussing earlier. And, but similarly, with Browserify, you're probably going to run into some um, limitations as well. Um, I feel like Browserify is awesome, but um, it's kind of a smaller community. You'll definitely probably hit some edges there. So, but I, I think that the, the, the debate that's been going on has been more about AMD versus uh, the, the CJS style of module patterns and, and how these modules should, should function in JavaScript. And I think it's actually a, a very healthy debate in the sense that I, I hope that it's informing the direction of the spec as uh, you know, these sort of things are, are being worked out. Which, speaking of, there is this uh, ES6 modules. And um, they're currently being designed. They, they look really promising. Uh, as I was saying, I hope that this debate is informing that design. And uh, in the end, this debate between these two camps may be moot in due time because we'll have this awesome module format. And um, you know that's probably a ways off because these sort of spec things uh, take a really long time. But you can start using this stuff today with like Google's uh, Tracer or um, some other uh, tools that are that are out there. I heard I heard somebody talking on the shuttle over here from uh, from the hotel that, that that they're already using this. Which, by the way. Um, Come talk to me. I'd like to hear more about your experience with that because it's pretty exciting. So in conclusion, in summary, wrapping up, um, do what's best for your application, uh, your requirements, your, your needs, your use cases. I, I'm definitely pro-require uh, because I've been, I have a lot of experience with it and can wholeheartedly re recommend it as like um, a mature way to, to build complex applications. Uh, although you, you, you may have some pain in that uh, as well as I uh, do. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to as well. But I'm also pro Browserify in that I think it has already made really great strides in, and shows a lot of potential while blazing this path towards like uh, fully integrated code between the uh, browser and the server, which of course is super, super exciting. And like I said, Come talk to me, tweet at me, whatever. Um, I like talking about this stuff. So yeah, I might be finishing a little bit early, but that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs>